Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Oh, hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So yesterday we did a video over on Hearts Home. That's the newest of the three channels that we have. And it was talking about ascension and technology and how to tell uh, basically benevolent from malevolent aliens again. We are getting into deeper into disclosure and uh, after this war period, you'll be seeing them quite clearly and there will be extraterrestrials acknowledged openly after this whole war period. Uh, it, again, is a, a trickle-out disclosure, but it's been out there. And again, this is the only age in which people don't know that there's other beings coming and going from the planet all the time. And that was a fun one because we did explain, you know, for people who are not accustomed to all of these new energies, like how do you tell them apart? How do you know good from bad? And we go into great detail. So that was a lot of fun. I liked doing that video. Yeah, and the one before it, um, I felt really good about it. It's talking about the event that changes reality forever because it is coming. And it's not about your dogma. It's about your frequency. It is all about where are you vibing at. And so we need to work on ourselves every day. And we do want to thank again our Patreons. Uh, there's unique videos going up there every couple days, every two, three days. And so here we have Israel's bombing of Gaza's Jabalia refugee camp. Horrific war crime. And these, these people were just basically gathering uh, to figure out what to do next. And then all of a sudden there's incoming. And, you know, again, people lost their lives. You know, you can see there's some really brave people in here that are like telling the kids, go this way, get away, get away. It's incoming. Yeah. And unfortunately, again, uh, a lot of people lost their lives. What's going on here is much bigger than Israel versus Hamas. That's that's just for outward appearances. You know, in reality, this is again. Uh, truly crimes against humanity crimes crimes against the planet and it's just simply using the tactic of divide and conquer we are watching uh just utter devastation and destruction going on as this right here is saying this is a second nakba nakba is like a, a sorrow a sorrow uh, um again it's it's so very biblical with the suffering and the, the people that were living in a land that was designated as Palestine were all of a sudden uprooted, kicked off in order to bring in another group that had just suffered through World War II as being, you know, target of, um, well, you know, again, eradication. So what you got going on right now is uh, 8,200 civilians killed uh, of Palestinian designation, 3,718 children, 22,000 injured, 1.5 million displaced, almost 200,000, probably over 200,000 housing units bulldozed, damaged, blown up, destroyed, and it goes on and on and on. It's no drinking water, no electricity, internet, food or medicines. For two million people, this is a, a, a massive amount of, of people that are being squished and, and just eradicated. It, it's horrendous to see, but history shows that this happens regularly. And let's not forget, what does this say? This says Palestine for the Jews. This is a, a newspaper article, and this is about the Balfour Declaration. And it's a letter to who? Lord Rothschild. Talking about the establishment of a national home in Palestine for the Jewish people. In where? Palestine. Oh, and then you have the revisionist history. There was no Palestine. And, you know, again, it, it's just, it's divide and conquer. This never, that part of it never changes. The people change, the names change, the countries change, but that part, you know, divide and conquer never changes. Well, they're so crafty in, in how they do it. The time 
that they wait in between, you know, episodes and the labels they put on it. it it's just constantly changing just enough so that people don't realize that it's the same game being played over and over. And, and what really kind of uh, makes me sad sometimes is most of us in our lives, we're going to deal with some type of a traffic ticket. We're going to get, we're going to get a jaywalking ticket. I mean, something like that. And we're going to have to go to court and deal with that. Or, you know, they're going to take away your driver's license. They're going to do something horrible and nasty to you, but you can drop bombs on, you know, innocent people and not a thing is going to happen to you. Not one thing. And every, every uh, being that's in the political realm, there are no such things as white hats. There's absolutely none. They're all in on it together. So no matter what they do, they just, they walk, you know, so crimes against humanity. Yes, there's so, so many, but they, they're, they'll never be held accountable. So that does really get at me sometimes. It just eats at me. Yeah, absolutely. As Yemen has officially declared uh, war on Israel, as you see rockets, missiles and drones being launched uh, towards the southern area of Israel right now. You know, what's what's really happening and Netanyahu, again, he understands what's happening right now. He is er eradicating uh, and destroying so many lives of these people that we've designated again as Palestinians all these terms they're just terms and and that's the bigger picture is is we're all part of something much bigger but we've been again uh, purposefully divided and it's right there again in the bible it just look to the tower of babel and i'm glad to see a lot more people are getting this tower of babel incident there's a lot more people that are truly awakening to just how big uh, this paradigm is on the planet. It's massive, and it's been going on for thousands of years. Um, just finished another book last night that was pretty well done. The author is Dean Henderson. It, it's talking about royal bloodlines, Watiko, and the great remembering. It's, it's tracing back these families that tie back to the Anunnaki uh, going back about 8,000 years. And he's written a series of books. Uh, it was a fast read. It was like a night and a half. Um, it started off a little bit slow, but he's got the political side of it down and you know the more modern part of our history uh, down with how they've done this to us. Again, it's Genesis 11. Look, you can't have humanity united because you know we wouldn't be able to control them it's divide and conquer it's very machiavellian so while netanyahu understands right now he is um just obliterating into nothingness the the gaza strip and also they are also working on the west bank not to the same degree he he also understands that what's coming is a reprisal which will literally erase israel from the maps and again, you're talking 9 million people on a tiny strip of land and you are antagonizing over a billion people um, of the Islamic uh, persuasion. And they are going to unite and they are going to absolutely obliterate every, everybody that's in Israel. And this is all purposeful. This is why the Red Shield brought Israel back into being in the first place. Here you have unconfirmed Hezbollah will join the war. Hezbollah and, and Iran have threatened that if the war does not end on Friday, the axis of resistance will be the side that directly intervenes in the war as well as Hezbollah. So again, y Yemen uh, does have about four times the people the population that Israel has, but they don't have anywhere close to uh, the military, not at all. And Yemen has been in... Uh, civil war again uh, Shia Sunni civil war going on proxy war between Saudi Arabia and Iran yet they are the first ones to take a side you know again it, it's it's in so many ways it is all for show um, but it is also like um, basically the littlest guy going out there the scrawniest littlest guy saying I'm going to fight yeah. you know so it's 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 done with the purpose 
of then other people will will come along and fight as well well i you know i guess i guess that's we need people to come together <laughs> you know i mean not for war but we need some type of agreement here it's just not going the direction i would like to see no and and honestly uh, i do think it's going to get worse unfortunately before it gets better if if you're really looking at all the comments out there we still see that people are mostly divided on one side or another they're still taking sides they're not taking a step back and saying you know enough there's not enough people that have gotten to the point where they're saying this is completely orchestrated both sides are being maneuvered into position and really it's humanity and the planet that is losing we got to take that approach to it so here we go um you know, you, you have the North Korean uh, leader, as you see, there's a lot of um, propaganda out there. Here they are testing another massive missile. Look at them look, staring at the, the watch. I mean, these they're like bad movies. That, I mean, seriously, they're as cheesy and corny. I'm waiting for Dr. Evil to come around the corner. Right. Where's Austin yeah. Powers when you need him? Yeah. This is how, but again, this is effective for their people. Because their people are conditioned in the way that they've conditioned their people. And we're conditioned in the U.S. And maybe that conditioning is in two different camps, mostly with a smaller group that sees the conditioning. Uh, each country is unique. Again, if you go all the way back to the uh, Anunnaki stories, each one of them that are not from here took a tribe for their own, for their own plaything. This is how they play Risk. This is how they play chess. This is a game to them in so many ways. As long as the resources that they want to get out of this world, they're getting out of this world, they don't really care too much uh, about you know what happens. And there are, again, uh, entities that are very dark and demonic that literally feed on the pain and suffering. This is why we have incessant pain and suffering. So, you know, here you have North Korea obviously showing they're ready and not just ready to, to start with South Korea. No, uh, they've actually been uh, sending a lot of military shells to Russia. This article says more than a million. I saw another one that was saying 10 times that has been going to Russia. Now, North Korea actually has one of the world's largest militaries. Uh, and again, uh, a real common comment you will see is they can't feed their people, but boy, they can sure, you know, put out military supplies. Well, this is the world in general. You know, again, everybody has their own purpose in this world. And you also had a leader. I'm trying to think of which one it was now. It, it, it was China. Uh, China had said, well, you know, the U.S. has a very bloody history. 16 of its years, it hadn't been in war. Every other year since it was born in 1776, it's been in war. And, and that is true. But And if you also really look at the Indian Wars, where a whole way of life was exterminated, well, you know, it wasn't just, again, the U.S. that did that. It was, uh, it was Great Britain. Well, what you have to realize is the U.S. empire is the U.K., it is Great Britain, it is uh, the British Empire. The British Empire is the Holy Roman Empire. And that Roman Empire is, again, uh, ultimately going back to the, the Sumerians and the Anunnaki. So the U.S. seeks to ramp up munitions production for Ukraine and Israel because we're about dry. <laughs> now, we are about dry. This is military times. This is purposeful because, again, what are they doing? All they're doing is ditching the U.S. and NATO as the military policing force of, of the world and people might call them globalists. Um, you know, in, in reality, what we have is is an extraterrestrial uh, force that has taken over the planet thousands of years ago. And you're waking up behind enemy lines. So this is purposeful. All they're going to do is just shift their locale. Just like, you know, the Roman Empire supposedly came and went. It never went. It just packed up and, and it moved north. 
And it's the same thing, you know, same thing with the British Empire. You know, and I was reading some uh, history and even some of the history uh, has, you know, books now are, you got some people waking up to the, the po point where they're saying, well, you know, some people do think that the U.S. didn't really win the Revolutionary War. They were allowed to uh, basically have their uh, semblance of independence but the reality was they were always hooked into the crown anyway and, and it was a Rothschild that said I don't care what puppets on you know the throne he who controls the money controls everything and he controls the money and again you might as well just say it doesn't matter what president puppet is is there because again 45 is not gonna save you 46 can't find his own diapers and that's purposeful. That is purposeful. They want him to look as senile as possible so they can say, well, he was just clueless. He didn't know what he was doing. They'd rather that than, than you know, saying he, he opened the doors and, and completely uh, allowed the destruction of the U.S. from within. Mm -hmm. It's very imperative for them that he looks and plays his part, and he does really good. And, you know, I just I got this thing in my head where, I really feel strongly that his diapers are numbered at this point. He is going to, <laughs> he's on a countdown. He's some, something's going to happen and he's going to be out, out of there. I, I just, just, just got that in, in the ear. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there, you know, and all of this is just, uh, it's kind of a wait and watch and see. And some people are asking me, you know, well, when do you think like all of this is going to happen in open form where there's just no denying and it's, it, it's happening to the mainstream and people can't go out and get food and they can't get gas. I, I don't know exactly when, but I can tell you that we're, we're just getting prepared in increments as best as we can. Because if you look at the, the situation in its totality, I don't think anybody could fully be prepared for what's going to happen. You know, again, the spiritual practice being everything that, that you're going to need. Um, you know, I don't want people to panic. People shouldn't panic. You should be going about your days and when you can, you know, sock some food back and, and take care of your animals, make sure your pets are taken care of and just sort of stay in that status. But I don't want people to be burning out their adrenals because they're so scared. That's not going to help us either. So, I mean, it's just a, a common, not a common situation we find ourselves in, but we need to treat this as something that we just simply need to stay prepared for. And Oh, the other thing was someone was saying, well, I don't know if I should just pull out a credit card and get the other stuff, get my preps. Well, Mike and I are doing everything we can to get out of debt and we're not going to take any steps to go further in debt. So that's just not something we would we would do, you know, because I do think that if there's debt, they have a way to control you so that we're watching that, too. Well, yeah, we are in a debt slavery system. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Egyptian army has begun to deploy a number of M60A3 Patton main, main battle tanks and also some infantry fighting vehicles near the Rafah border crossing between the Sinai Peninsula and the Gaza Strip. And, you know, uh, again, y you got to understand the bigger picture. The bigger picture is, and the reason why things don't appear to make sense, like why wouldn't they help them? is because it's not the bigger purpose. The bigger purpose is you got to pull the entirety of the world into uh, buying this global conflict. They have to sell the war. They have to sell it by making atrocities so uh, egregious that, that how could you say, no, you know, we got to go in there. They want people to say, stop this, stop this, at whatever the cost. But then the whatever the cost is exactly what they are waiting for. That is why they create these conditions. By the way, the DOD confirms as directed energy weapon capability that can be used to protect U.S. forces in the Middle East. Uh, yeah, hello, 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 uh, 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 the 15-minute city, Hawaii, Lahaina, hello. Yeah. Where else have you been using this? Uh, you know, the reality is, 
again, the Department of Defense, it's not about the Department of Defense of the American people. No, it, it's of, of the system. It, it's of the uh, Illuminati families. It, it's of the banking cabal. It's of the secret societies. Uh, you know, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Central Intelligence Agencies, they all work in tandem with MI6, with uh, other entities within the structures of all the major players on the planet. And they don't work for humanity. They work for the non-humans. This is the reality of this. You know, this is all for show. Look to your history to see what's going to happen tomorrow. Again, look to the history because they just do the same thing over and over again. They're, they're not really very, very inventive. That's one thing that you realize with AI is it just utilizes the same tactics over and over. Unfortunately for humanity, we, we, we don't learn uh, from our mistakes. And really, the only mistake we're making is trusting in the system <laughs> and not understanding that we're part of a bigger whole. Something terribly wrong in the UK. They're arresting people for opinions if it goes against the government's narrative. Having a different opinion no longer allowed in the UK. Well, it's no longer allowed in Canada. It's no longer allowed in Australia and New Zealand. What's in common? They're all crown lands. You know, the sun never did set on the British Empire. The Roman Empire didn't really fall. And it all goes back to Samaria is, is the bottom line. As British police come to a man's home to arrest him for posting a video to Facebook of him criticizing migrants in his area... For putting up Palestinian flags. So he gets arrested. Now if you shoplift, they'll say, naughty boy, naughty girl, don't do it again. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Yeah, this is exactly the world we live in because there's a bigger purpose. This is Tony Saruga. And, you know, he is an insider's insider, so I wouldn't trust him at all. You know, he's a 39-year intelligence analyst. And some of his clients are the U.S. government, British government, Israeli government, on and on and on, Northrop Grumman. Okay, so Tony, I wouldn't trust you at all. I would be afraid to be around you. But at the same time, yeah, they are always giving out info. And this is legit. You know, it's true. And they're letting us know because it's too far along now to stop. And what's he saying? Well, the fact that Hezbollah is, is here in this country. Not just Hezbollah, but uh, there's many other groups. Uh, there's millions. There's tens of millions that are inside the country illegally, what we understand. So many of them are sleeper cells. I thought one of the things that was very, very interesting is the timing. Uh, he's talking about attacks coming. He says, rarely can I guarantee the intelligence. Many times just releasing it into the wild can stop a false flag or a genuine attack. But as close to 100% confidence as possible, there will be multiple terrorist attacks in the U.S. They will come in waves for the next 14 months. Hundreds of thousands of CCP saboteurs trained to attack our electrical grid, poison our water supply, destroy our railways, maintain highway artery, harder, uh, arteries, and additionally, at least a million, possibly two million terrorists are already here from Palestine, Yemen, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan. Now, it, it goes on and on. They have debit cards, UN, we know all this. Uh, there's three links to articles on Hezbollah Unit 910, a sleeper cell already awaiting the green light from Iran to launch attacks. And there's hundreds of these groups. They, why haven't they really struck? I mean, we saw a lot of train derailments and stuff. It's because they're waiting. They're, and what are we going to have now? Now, right, where are we sending all our military? Away from here. And, you know, Monkey Works was on the other day. And it stunned me because I thought he would have figured this out a long time ago. Um, he, and he does a great job. But he was saying, why is there all this Coast Guard forces and power away from the u.s hello you know yeah we've been saying that forever i mean the, the coast guard is is way away from us and they're sending all this supplies away from us we are so naked and vulnerable total sitting ducks this is completely on purpose and this is all part of that bigger 
plan. And this plan's enormous, too. I mean, this is global. This is, af after all, that G-R-E-A-T. Uh-huh. You remember the other word starts with R. Pakistan expelling 1.7 million refugees, bulldozed immigrant shelters. There's this great UN uprooting that's going on. And it's all over. It is all over. Um, what they're doing, again, is people cannot root and ground when, when you don't have a place to root and ground, so to speak. Um, before this system came here, we were nomadic hunter-gatherers for the most part. <clears throat> and if things got bad in one area, we would move to another. This is also why we were always uh, utilizing autophagy to clean out our cells and our body. Because we didn't eat three square meals a day, we didn't sit at a desk sipping uh, high fructose corn syrup every day, and that's why there really wasn't any cancer. Uh, there really wasn't any diabetes. These are all modern things that come about with the lifestyle that they've kind of handed to us to make us more soft and sedentary. And in the times that come, you know, soft and sedentary is not going to make it. No, it's not. And, you know, I, I just think it's really not very nice that they did give us this diet. And even those people that were trying to eat well, uh, you know, they, they throw Weight Watchers out there because people are not able to lose weight. And even in Weight Watchers, they have everything backwards. They're telling you to have six, you know, six snacks a day and and all of the uh, foods that are so processed out there, they put them on a point system as if it's okay to eat them if it has 15 ingredients. That's not okay and that's not how you take care of the body. But people being very desperate and uneducated just going by what the system is telling us, well, that of course they're going to they're just going to do their best. That's all they know. They don't know any different. They don't know any better. They just want help. So it's been this system, you know, the system to the rescue for for years and years and years. So every time we see something system, I mean, Mike and I were just really uh disgusted with it. And sometimes we have to put our foot into the system to deal with certain things but I learn something every single time I learn okay I'm gonna stick my foot in the system here but by golly I'm gonna block that off so I don't have to do that again so it's just this constant learning about how to get out of the system biggest thing is learn about health learn about how to take care of your body learn about which herbs and stuff that you need for for a better life and to keep yourself healthy and your pets oh my gosh your pets I mean they give them some of the worst food you know you go out and you buy that ultra processed dog food and there's so many problems with skin issues uh cancer um they don't live very long and, and it's just really sad but again like mike said that's the system they have given us and m so many too many people accept it with just pure trust and and that's going to be our downfall absolutely and you know this Last line here. This is also needed in Europe. And the last thing we need to do is is to be uh, basically making life harder for more people. We need to really have solutions. And yeah, a lot more people are bringing up the fact that, wow, all the weapon money that we spend, what if we were actually trying to build stuff with it? What if we were actually trying to you know, make greenhouses in the desert uh, and do waterworks projects and, you know, desalination or, yeah, there's, the earth is only in this uh, state because of the system. The system is poisoning, toxifying, and purposefully, again, because it wants to control all the resources. It wants every single person on the planet to be nothing but a slave unless you're part of uh, the secret societies, again, if you're part of the controllers, you will get a better uh, life as a rewarded, a well-rewarded slave. This is the, still the bottom line. You're still a slave to the system. So I don't know where or when uh, this was, but, you know, this is just curious. Uh, what's really curious, too, is, you know, those boxes, to me, that looks like you would probably have something like an AR-15, some sort of quote-unquote sporting rifle in there it looks to be a, a police station you know maybe state trooper station 
it's talking about is this for the UN? Is this for the migrants? Is what originally came up for um, in Cindy's mind, there, those Berettas. You know, um, I don't know. But it's weird how they're just leaving them out there in the open too, <laughs> casually carrying in like four or five boxes at a time. You know, where you have, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of weaponry sitting there um, that could be heisted pretty easily. So it, it's just curious. But again, you know, it's part of the bigger plan. Uh, disarm the locals and, and then they're easily conquered. You know, when you look at some of what happened in in the past, uh, that's that's where you got to look. Look to the past because, again, you can uncover things and you'll you'll get an inkling of what's coming. Air Force is investigating potential brain cancer cluster. Can an Air Force base, and these are children in New Mexico's uh, Cannon Air Force Base, seem to be developing brain cancer uh, quicker than those at other installations, fast-growing tumors. Wonder what that can be. Well, the reality again is is well, if you if you're shooting off uh, toxic substances and you're around toxic substances all the time, you know you're you're going to have a higher likelihood of this type of thing happening. Water supply is a real problem in New Mexico. I mean, and and again, so many places they've you know done different tests that we don't even know about and people are exposed to and then they develop all sorts of health issues a romanian tourist arrives in paris can't believe his eyes he's saying this is paris this is paris the city of lights um you know i thought we were coming somewhere that wasn't going to look like this wow but this is what the system does and it's done it before and it'll keep doing it until we wake up and and realize that there's only really one problem. It's the control system that is in place. How many people are drug addicts? And we were discussing this yesterday with some medical professionals and, and giving them some uh, bones, to on. bones to chew on. Yeah, yeah. As, as somebody said to me when we were having a discussion, well, that's been debunked. <laughs> and it was like, oh, you want to go there? <laughs> Oh, I have such a hard time shutting up. But anyway, Opium Wars. Now, 1839 through 1842 and 1856 through 1860, opium was smuggled by merchants from British India into China in defiance of Chinese prohibition laws. China was defeated in both wars. The British had superior military. China loses their ethnocentric beliefs. Yeah, I mean, China is basically America now, so, so to speak, and, and they uh, are to go to a little bit more position of prominence in the interim as they're bringing about the changes in their system. But yeah, I mean, who, who was pushing the drugs? It, it was the crown. The crown was pushing the drugs. That's the bottom line. And in these battles, it was like uh, just a slaughter because, again, uh, the, the British military had much advanced uh, weaponry and where China, the, the Chinese people lost like a couple thousand, they lost like six people in the British military in one of those wars there. And what are we looking here? It, it's like Canada is owned by the Hudson Bay Company. In case you haven't heard of the Hudson Bay Company, you know, again, historical trading posts and territories and slavers. And, and also, again, at, at the behest of the crown, they come over, uh, they just do atrocities to the natives in the area. They eliminate a way of living in harmony with the land and impose their way. And again, uh, it's not necessarily even really the British uh, crown, so to speak. It, it's really an extension of, of the Sumerian Anunnaki. And that's what we have to understand. Just because we don't see them doesn't mean that they're not still there. The indigenous and the Hudson Bay Company, you know, it, it's they, they, they are wiping out more and more um, of the articles that expose uh, just how, again... You know, the Native Americans in North, South, and Central America 
um, so much of their way of life was just just obliterated. Hundreds of millions of people lost their lives in the Americas because of uh, the colonialism that happened from the European countries, you know, not just uh, Britain or the UK, but also France and Spain and others as well. You know, it's just anybody that is trying to live in harmony and understands the value of nature gets completely put underfoot and their way of life is removed and you know just like i've quoted we're all living in america with a k that Ramstein song in reality we're all living in sumeria and you could go over to the east india company as well the british east india company private corporation yeah but it has the crown and it has the military behind it so this corporate system is nothing new. And and now you're going to have P.F. Iser and you're going to have Bayer and other ones. Uh, you know, they might just no longer be. It doesn't really matter because the people that form those companies will just form new companies and nobody will be held accountable as the rape, robbing and pillaging of humanity keeps going on. This has been happening nonstop. And, and what happened to India again? They, uh, again, used people as slaves. And they did it by force, by force. And, you know, we could look to South Africa. We could look all over. When, when you see the slave trade and, and you see this, this is, you know, again, wait a minute, this guy is, is one of them. Yeah, they use whoever will betray their own people to have a better life, they'll use them, whether we're talking, again, uh, Britain or Roman, Emperor, Roman Empire or Sumeria. It doesn't matter. It's the same system. They'll find the ones that will adapt into the system, look to advance in the system. And again, you know, this is why your your Harvards, your Yale, uh, your, your elite uh, colleges around the globe, they're always on the lookout for humans that have that desire to rise to the top, to rise to the top by stepping over others. And this is who ends up in politics. And this is who ends up controlling, apparently controlling, but they're not really controlling because they're still slaves themselves. And even the Bible, you know, again, condones slavery then you could go to evilbible.com evilbible.com and you will find a, a list of quotes that are atrocious because again it's given to us by the system the system takes whatever uh, has value and worth and distorts it this is just what the system does it twists it and utilizes it to its own benefit so when we see, you know, those depictions of, again, African slaves, and we see this, which is thousands of years old, and it's, again, humans tied, ropes, hands behind their back. But look at this guy. He's flying. This is saying that they have the technology to fly, you know, like Yahweh. Yeah, exactly. They have the technology to fly, but they're humans. They look like they're humans. And others are slaves. This is the same system. They are giants. Now, whether you call them Nephilim, but here's here's the, the rub, so to speak. You know, again, people will say they're fallen angels. And again, angel just means messenger in the Greek translation. But again, here you go. Flying high in the sky, if we go to Persia, you'll see Ahura Mazda uh, depicted flying in the sky. And, and, and that's the top god in the Persian pantheon, the Zoroastrian um, point of view. As you see, obviously, a giant compared to, to people. And, of course, they will say, well, that's just because, you know, you got to put the king on a pedestal. No, it's because there were giants. And, you know, again, people will say, well, it's the fallen angels. Yeah, but that's Yahweh. And you, if you look closely, you see where they were using El and Elohim. And then you have 
translations going to Yahweh. And again, the oldest depictions of Yahweh that we have show him with uh, his um, private parts exposed. Very, very, um, yeah, that's not the creator of the universe. Uh, no, again, this is usurping that position. And this is exactly what we have. You know, this is the same old story. It's the same old story. And yet they keep us, they keep us divided. The British government, Rothschilds trained monkeys. And again, the Red Shields are, are just one of those families that are out there in the open. That's why they're Red Shields. It's not even the original name because they're shielding the others, so to speak. They're out there in the open so the others can re remain uh, a little bit more in the dark. And and this is, again, the reality. The politicians, you know, the, calling them trained monkeys is doing a disservice to monkeys. As this guy shows, you know, animals are not dumb. They're not dumb at all. They are much more intelligent. They're exploited by the system. Uh-oh. Well, maybe that wasn't a wise choice. They're exploited by the system just like we are. Oh, what a cutie. He is so <laughs> cute. Look at that. I had a, a golden for a little while, and they are just so precious and so sweet and full of love. And now we have our now we have our dobies, and they are precious and sweet and full of love. And I've never had an animal that wasn't just absolutely wonderful in every way and isn't it just so sweet to have someone in your life that really wants nothing but love and the, they'll just accept the love they they don't need anything in return that's that's it's like a one-way street they're going to come and love you if you're gone for five minutes they're going to come run into the door because they missed you the same as if you were gone for five hours uh, you just don't get better souls than that and sometimes i i don't think humans deserve dogs <laughs> i just they don't treat them very well which kind of brings me to a topic which i found really sad a little off topic but i want to touch on it i do like look keep track in in areas where animals are being sent to shelters and their shelters are so overflowing i mean they're overflowing with um with animals because their owners have died so they pat the owners pass away they leave behind five five dogs or so five very well loved taken care of dogs and then these dogs have to go to these shelters and they're just totally totally traumatized and you know there's things there's fosters if you become a foster you know they do help you pay for their food they help you pay for uh medical needs if you can just hold that dog long enough for them to find an adopter because i if they go to uh, animal control, I think they only have it's if it's an owner surrender, they actually put them to sleep right away. I didn't know that. That was just so heartbreaking. I thought they had some time, but if they don't put them to sleep right away, it's like five days, five days. So there's just not enough people out there anymore to take on these these angels that we have and then there's just so many angels losing their humans and it's kind of heartbreaking at the moment and um i just wanted to share that with people as we look at what's being called the hand of god cosmic hand yeah again you know our our real nature has been hidden from us and truly we are stars we are stars and it's it's so fascinating that here they give us Hollywood with those type of stars that are, you know, not stars at all, but just, uh, I, I don't know, I can't think of any good words. <laughs> but, you know, our real nature is, is truly uh, unconditional love, and this is a learning experience, and that's the type of thing that we go into on Heart's Home much, much more in much, much more uh, depth without as much, if any, of the news. So please do jump over there and subscribe as well. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.